Before we continue with the major topic of discussion, it is important that we first have a clear understanding of the Om or Om sound, as well as the Anahata sound, and the differences between the two. The mysterious connection between Anahata and Om or Om. The word Anahata is a Sanskrit word that means unstruck or unbeaten. It refers to a sound that arises without any external cause, like the striking of two objects. This sound is considered to be the primal sound of the universe before the creation of the universe. In the Vedas and Puranas, the concept of Anahata sound is closely related to the spiritual realm and the practice of meditation and yoga. This sound is not perceived with the physical ears but is heard internally by the practitioner as they dive into a state of profound concentration and inner stillness. This celestial sound is considered to be a manifestation of the Om or Om sound. When it is associated with the unmanifested states of reality, it is referred to as Anahata, and when it is related to the manifest side of reality, it is referred to as Om or Om. However, in actuality, they are not separate from one another, rather, they are two aspects of the same thing. The Anahata sound existed prior to the creation of everything else, and it will continue to exist even after all else has vanished. The sound of Om was born from the Anahata sound, and all of the other sounds that exist in the cosmos right now were born from the Om sound. The foundation of creation as well as the foundation of individual creators, is the Anahata sound. However, it is important to keep in mind that the creator and individual creators are not the same concept. The original creator is the source of all individual creators. It is the Anahata that splits the creator into multiple independent creators. Individual creators are always dependent on Anahata sound. But the Creator is not dependent on Anahata sound in any manner. When individuality disappears, the Creators that once existed become indistinguishable from the Creator, which is independent of Anahata sound. In simple words, the Om sound serves as the foundation for all other sounds, and the Anahata sound serves as the foundation for the Om sound. In the end, each and every one of these sounds originated from the Anahata sound. Our connection to the Anahata sound, who are we? In the context of the Vedas, the concept of the universe's creation and the origin of beings is quite complex and multifaceted. The idea of arising from Anahata sound is not explicitly mentioned in the Vedas in the way it is commonly understood. The Vedas describe creation through various metaphors and allegorical stories, and different schools of thought interpret these descriptions in their own ways. The primary association of the sound of Anahata is with that component of reality that exists before the creation, as well as the existence of the creation itself. The Anahata sound has a direct link to our physical aspect, but our true form is independent of the Anahata sound in any way. It indicates that we, all of the awareness, are totally free from any and all forms of physicality. A beautiful explanation regarding our true form can be found in one of the ancient Indian texts known as the Yoga Vasishta. It was stated that we are the intelligence that is responsible for the birth of physicality, including the sound of Om and Anahata. Although it is not part of the universe, it is its creator. The universe is not him. However, if you believe that pure intelligence is only the universe itself, then you have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever. Therefore, the cosmic intelligence in which the cosmos, as it were, ceases to be, is our true form, which we have long since forgotten about. The human intelligence cannot be seen and neither can our real form, which is a part of the intelligence of the universe, but has never been seen even if it does exist. We are this pure cosmic intelligence. This intelligence is at the center of everything, 
and in its light, the three states of consciousness waking, dreaming, and deep sleep appear to be a mirage. When the infinite is vibrating, the worlds give the impression that they are rising up. But when it is not vibrating, they give the impression that they are sinking down. But keep in mind that whether it is vibrating or not, the situation is the same everywhere and at all times. It is the only thing you know, and yet you know everything else. Action, form, taste, smell, sound, touch, and thinking. Yet, it is that which enables you to know everything else. It resides in the one who sees, the sight, and the very seeing itself. This is an absolutely stunning explanation of our actual form. 114 Big Bangs or Creations in the Field of Anahata Sound What causes these Big Bangs in the field of pure intelligence or awareness? The Yoga Vasistha explains that initially there is nothing more than a field of intelligence or awareness that is devoid of any name or form. It is possible to think of it as a pure form of intelligence or awareness. Because it has no previous karma, it does not have any memories of the past. The unborn has no physical body because it is only composed of spiritual substance, it does not even exist. On the other hand, a thought emerges in the pure field of intelligence. Because this first thought was the driving force behind all of the variety forms of creation, and because the creator of everything has no material form, the creation itself is truly of the nature of thought and is devoid of any kind of substance. A throbbing arose in the field of pure intelligence or awareness whose thought had spread out as the universe. All living things owe their existence to the birth of this throb which brought into existence their subtle, intelligent bodies. Forgetting their true nature, as pure intelligence devoid of any thought at all. These beings, made entirely of thought, believe that the appearance was real. Like sexual pleasure in a dream, this illusion was mistakenly believed to be real and had real-world consequences. In the objective universe, even these beings of intelligence, despite having no physical form, appear to have one. The beings have a dual nature, one that is intelligence or awareness and the other thought. While intelligence or awareness is pure, confusion is inherent in the thinking process. As a result, hence, it appears or arise, but he does not actually emerge. Everything in the universe relies on these sentient beings, and each thought that forms in their minds eventually takes physical form. As goblins, who are actually shapeless, but appear to have shapes because of the delusion of the observer, on account of self-forgetfulness of this, and of the thought of physical forms, these beings of intelligence freeze into the physical forms. Beings who have attained enlightenment, on the other hand, are unaffected to this kind of illusion. As a result, its nature is invariably one that is spiritual rather than material. The enlightened being possesses a spiritual nature, and as a result, his creation also possesses a spiritual nature at its core in reality. This creation has no underlying cause. Therefore, it is fundamentally spiritual, despite the fact that these beings are composed entirely of intelligence. The materiality of the creation is similar to the castle in the air, in that it is an illusory projection of one's own thoughts, which are imaginary. Keep in mind that all sentient beings start out as formless and are composed entirely of pure awareness or intelligence. However, once thoughts begin to form, our bodies also begin to form and are composed entirely of thoughts. These thoughts have always been a part of our awareness or intelligence. The perceiver possesses both the subject and the object of perception within themselves. The perceiver is an aspect that is made from intelligence in its purest form. Why there are 114 big bangs or creations arise in the field of pure intelligence or awareness? 
The moment when the first fundamental thought emerges in the realm of pure intelligence or awareness. In ancient India, people referred to this field of pure intelligence or awareness as the Brahman, Paratma, the Supreme, the Knower, and other similar names. There are no names for this primal field of pure intelligence, as stated in the ancient Indian scripture known as Yoga Vasista, which was discovered in India. The ones who have attained enlightenment come up with these names in order to write various scriptures and instruct disciples who are still immature. When the first throbbing or roar appeared in the field of pure intelligence or awareness, it will take almost 114 consecutive throbbings for the field to regain its original pure form of intelligence. This form of pure intelligence existed before the first thought appeared. When compared to the first throbbing or roar, the volume of each of these throbbings, vibrations and roars is gradually becoming less intense as the order progresses. At the conclusion of the 114th throbbing, these throbs will eventually become disappearing in the field of intelligence. Because of this, there are 114 big bangs, also known as throbbing, in the field of pure intelligence. At this very moment, our throb is ranked 84th. Because of this, 84 is an important number in our lives right now, regardless of whether or not we are aware of its significance. The number 84 is significant because in the course of this existence, there have been 84 occurrences. This is the 84th time that it has occurred, making it the 84th time overall. The findings of modern science have demonstrated that all of existence is merely vibration. It is not something I came up with. Rather, it is a fact based on scientific research. It is inevitable for there to be a sound whenever there is a vibration. Any place where there is vibration will almost certainly also have sound. Therefore, the vibrations that make up your physical layers are also audible sounds. In ancient India, people referred to this sound as Om. How do these ancient peoples know about it? If someone were to cut down a tree today, by examining the rings in the tree's trunk, they would be able to determine when in the past thousand years there was a drought, when there was excessive rain, and when there was a fire. This information would be available. In a similar vein, the very history of this creation is encoded within this one and it will be known if we cut our system using our own intelligence or awareness. In terms of the physical layers, what happened as a consequence of that 84th throb or roar is where we are at this very moment. When ancient people looked into their system, they saw that 83 of the possible 84 creations had already taken place, and the remaining one was in the process of taking place at that very moment. Out of these, creation is taking place in an ongoing fashion, while at the same time, dissolution is also taking place in an ongoing fashion. Therefore, the process of dissolution began for some creation, and they began dissolving in an endless cycle of dissolving, dissolving, and dissolving. Only 20 of these are still dissolving, and their dissolution is at varying stages. The rest have been entirely eradicated, with the exception that we can still see them in our awareness or intelligence. By observing this creation because in some way it carries the residue or the experience of everything that has come before it. The process of creation has also been carrying the experience of each creation into the next one and the next one, even though they are all very different from one another. This is similar to how you carry your life experience into everything that you do but on a much larger scale. What is our purpose as an aspect of formless intelligence or awareness? The one in position 84 is the real thing. After that, in descending order, are there 83 creations that are active. In the 84th one, there are two. The first is the physicality, which carries the memory of everything. The second is the source of creation or this field of pure intelligence, what we are talking right now. 
This field is the basis for the future. If you are unconscious, then we are only able to access a small portion of your past memories, and we have lost access to a much larger portion of your more profound memories from the past. Your recent past has become the present and the future. Everyone is suffering from some form of dementia. He does not remember anything that took place before he emerged in his mother's womb or anything that occurred while he was still developing inside her. They are either suffering from dementia or are memoryless, but are unaware of the true nature of the situation, which is why the circle appears to be brand new. They are able to make it appear brand new with each passing. They are like animals in a loop. But if you become conscious, then this aspect of pure field of intelligence or awareness will access all your previous memories. In other words, we will be able to access all of the previous memories of creations, and we will be able to create things that are possibly different from the things we have created in the past. In other words, you will be able to break free from the cyclical nature of your recent short memory. Right now we aren't going to get anywhere because on the circle we think it's a new journey, and the reason why we think it's a new journey is because our memories are so short. According to Sadhguru, you have another dimension within you that has never been born, and it will never die either. Neither of these things will ever happen to it. If you touch that dimension, you have something called as a future, otherwise you have just karma. Karma indicates that you are recalling your experiences over and over again. You might alter the color, and the manner in which you carry out the task might undergo a transformation, but the core components of what you do remain unchanged. You are still behaving in the same way that the cavemen did, and you were doing the same things back then. Although the look and capabilities have evolved, the substance itself has not changed. Actually, Sagaryu is directly pointing to this field of pure intelligence or awareness from where we all are arise. There are plenty of signs or there are a great number of components in the body that make it very clear that the recollection of these 84 creations is still present in your body. It is present in each and every atom that makes up the universe. You are attempting to free yourself from the memory of it because you realize that it is what is holding you imprisoned at this point. Consequently, when you engage in meditation, you make it your goal to cut everything because you cannot progress in your practice if you do not first cut that, which is equivalent to cutting your anchor. So why this memory is holding me back? It is that memory that has provided your body with integrity and stability, as well as the structure of who you are right now in this moment. It would not have been possible to create this body if that and this memory did not exist. Without the memory of a single-celled animal being contained within you, without all of that information having been carried through the process of evolution and you sitting here, without that memory this body cannot be structured and held together. It seems that your problem is not with your memory itself, but rather with your inability to properly hold it. The issue is that you are into it, which is a problem. You really care about it. You want to make use of the memory, but you don't want to be used by your memory. That is the goal of spiritual sadhana. You hope that your future will be very different from the way things were in the past. That's the goal of every living being who stay in this field of Anahata sound. 